Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about sleep. And I want to talk about what I think of as a widespread myth in our society about sleep. And some people seem to buy into it so much, but to me it seems plainly ridiculous. And basically the idea is that people will get into a place where they're really stressed out. Like this often happens in college and grad school, and it can happen when people are working in a high pressure, fast paced job too. They'll get into this position where they're stressed out, and they say, oh, I don't have enough time to sleep because I have too much to do. So like, people start getting chronically behind on their sleep and then they are in this place where they feel really overwhelmed and they're not getting all their responsibilities met. And the reason why I think that this is absurd is that if you're not getting enough sleep, it profoundly affects your ability to get work done. And I've seen this firsthand. I have experience with getting enough sleep and not getting enough sleep and seeing how it affects my performance. And there are also lots of studies on this. I would encourage you to look up studies backing some of the claims that I make, because you'll find that there's been a lot of research on this. One of the more obvious things about sleep loss is that it affects people's concentration. So for example, if you're not getting enough sleep, especially if you're not getting enough sleep chronically, you're not going to be focusing as effectively when you sit down to work. And this is going to be especially true if you're in an unstructured environment, like you're in college and you're having to basically discipline yourself to do work during these chunks of free time that you have. I think that's when it affects people the most. But it can also affect people when you're in a normal full-time job within fixed scheduled hours. So basically, you might be trying to work for an hour or two hours, but if you're not well rested, you're going to get less done during that time than if you had been adequately rested. You had gotten like a full night's sleep, whatever that is for you. So this is an obvious way where this sleep myth comes into being. Basically, people get into this cycle where they feel overwhelmed and they maybe stay up one or two nights in a row to like finish a paper or study for a test, or maybe they were working late at the job and then they come home and they have more responsibilities. And so after a night or two, they're behind on sleep and now their performance is starting to suffer. And then they get caught in a cycle where they have to put in more hours just to get the lower level of productivity that they used to get out of their normal work day. And then people who are sort of buying into this myth they keep going in this cycle, thinking, oh, I don't have enough time, whereas really it's a downward spiral and you need to break it. And if you're in college, basically you're often put in positions where you have to hand in lower quality work than you normally would. And I've had some times like this. I realized this pretty early on in college, and there were times when I was working on a paper and I was like, I know this professor pretty well, I know their standards, I know that if I hand this in, in the current form it's in, I'm going to get max a B. And I know I'm capable of an A, and I could put in more hours and get an A, but I can't afford to lose that sleep because I have other stuff in other classes coming up. I mean, I think if you want to be successful in a sort of fast-paced, pressure, high-pressure environment, you need to make those sorts of decisions. You need to kind of half-ass things from time to time. And in a workplace, that often involves set, putting your foot down with your boss, being assertive, standing up for yourself. And you can let your boss know that it's for the good of the company in the long run. Like, some workplace environments can be outright toxic. Like, maybe your normal work hours end at 5, but you know, people are staying till 7, they're staying till 9 p.m. I've been in a couple offices like this, and it can get pretty toxic, and it's hard to stand up for yourself when everyone around you is buying into this myth. But I know my own ability to work, and I know that I'm not going to get very much done in the long run. I might be able to put in one or two long nights 
but I can't keep that up, and very quickly my performance is going to suffer, and that's not going to be good for the company. So I think you can make it, you can sort of sell the idea of why rest is important if you stand up for yourself. And if your boss doesn't get it, maybe question whether or not it makes sense for you to stay in that position, because there are lots of other companies out there you could be working for. So, I was talking mainly about focus. I want to talk about two other things, though, because I think that there are two, at least two other reasons why this sort of sleep myth is really a myth, and why it is almost always worthwhile to make sure you get enough sleep and to put the work down. So the second point is creativity. So a lot of work is not straightforward. I majored in math in college, and this is especially true. Like, you get a lot of hard math problems where the solution isn't immediately apparent. You're not just churning out pages of equations. You have to get like a flash of insight. And sometimes the solution is very simple when you realize the right way of thinking about it. So if you're in a more creative mindset, you might solve a problem in 15 minutes. Whereas if you're sort of trying to brute force it, you might be banging your head against the wall for four hours and still not come up with a solution. When it comes to writing, creativity is also very important. So these are two completely different ends of the spectrum in terms of college and academics, but creativity is equally important. Like, you're trying to think up how to formulate an argument, even little things like how to formulate a sentence, your writing style, your word choice, the flow of your argument. All of these things require creativity. And creativity is often one of the first things to suffer when you start losing sleep. And there's a lot of research on this, too, and I've noticed this with myself. The creativity is often gone even before I notice trouble concentrating. So if I'm losing a little bit of sleep, I'm a little bit behind on my sleep, I might be able to perform about at the same level at straightforward tasks, but if I try to tackle a harder task that requires creativity, like a tough math problem, or writing a paper that has a fairly involved argument, or doing some creative writing, those things I'm not as good at, even with just a little bit of sleep loss. There's yet a third factor here, which is health. And health is one of the big factors in this sort of downward spiral that I was talking about. So, if you lose sleep, one of the first things it does is it weakens your immune system. And this can cause all sorts of problems. And the basic, most common one is that people get sick. So, you're not getting enough sleep, you're much more likely to get sick with something like a cold or a flu. And a cold can be kind of inconvenient and add an additional stressor, which can really pile it on if you're already under a lot of stress. Something like a flu, on the other hand, can really knock you out. It can completely wipe out two or three days of your life, where you're not really able to do much of anything other than sleep. And Obviously, if you're in a time pressure environment, that is the last thing you want. So, and I've seen, I've seen people fall into this problem, and I've had this experience myself, where I'm getting stressed, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay up to do this thing, and then I get sick, and suddenly I end up losing a lot more time than I gained by staying up those few hours a couple nights in a row. So basically, I hope I've convinced you of this sort of sleep myth, that it looks tantalizing, but you don't actually get very much out of those extra hours if you stay up late. I think it almost always pays off to stay on a regular sleep schedule, where you get the amount of sleep that you need, whatever that is. Different people might need slightly different amounts, but make sure you're getting it regularly. And if things start to get stressful, learn how to put your foot down, learn how to half-ass things, learn how to assert yourself with authority figures. Sometimes that might involve asking for extensions, sometimes it might involve turning people down, just saying, no, I'm sorry, I don't have time to do this right now. That's an important skill to learn in life. And I think if you do this, you will ultimately be much more productive in the long run, and you'll be happier, healthier, you'll be performing at a high, higher level, you'll be more creative. This has been my experience. So, 
I hope this has been helpful, and I would really encourage you to share this video with people who voice opposing ideas, because I think, I think a lot of people voice this idea of like, oh, I don't have enough time to get a full night's sleep, but they're not really thinking about it rationally. And if you think about it rationally, it's pretty obvious that it's almost always worthwhile to get a full, full night's sleep. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.